I want to start my session with a statement that many people will think is controversial. So here goes. Your sponsor or exhibitor probably never wanted to attend your physical event in the first place, but they did want the leads that your event was able to generate. Now, I don't think this is controversial. Sure, some events are great, but many are a means to an end for a commercial partner. They want the targeted qualified leads, and we know that they will pay for them. Now, it may be that you believe that you can't deliver this value virtually. Well, I'm here to help you see that you can. Virtual events can deliver those leads just as well, if not better, than your physical event. Now, before we move forward together, you have to make sure you do this one thing. I want you to focus on how you can qualify and deliver those leads, not on how you can replicate the value from your physical event. The virtual events which are already failing online are those that are concentrating on replicating the physical event and not the value that the stakeholders received from the physical event. And in many cases, they're not the same thing. So somewhat ironically, this jump to virtual has allowed us, and perhaps it's a once in a generation opportunity, to reassess our physical events. Now you're hopefully already seeing an amazing transformation of conference programmes as events have jumped to virtual. Out has gone the boring one-hour panel sessions and the endless PowerPoint presentations to be replaced by truly texturised content. This focus on engagement and interaction has been brilliant to watch. Now, what has happened with virtual content can and should be happening with virtual sponsorship. We have to take the chance to offer more value to our sponsors. Running virtual events offers us the opportunity to reassess the value proposition within our sponsorship packages. The shift to virtual has forced us all to take a step back and assess the what and the how of our sponsorship packages. And this is a wonderful opportunity to make them better for our sponsors to add even more value. I want to briefly cover three different aspects of digital sponsorship. The first part is my overview of the three main elements that we should concentrate on when we design our digital sponsorship. The second is how you retain as much revenue from your physical event now that it's in the virtual world. Basically, how do you make sure the most of your sponsors come with you on this digital journey? And finally, to look at this not from our perspective as event organisers, but from our sponsors' perspective. So this is my overview of what elements virtual event sponsorship should cover. Now, I will look at how I break down every sponsorship agreement I see. And as an events consultant, I have seen scores of them. I look at the contract and break down the benefits for sponsors into three parts. The first part is brand awareness. The second part is thought leadership. And then finally, we have face to face. And the really important point I want to make here is that all of this is underpinned by lead generation. So look at what you currently offer your sponsors at your physical event and group everything from your contract into those three areas. And they are again brand awareness, thought leadership and face to face. Now this is the first step as you make the jump to virtual and hope that your sponsors come with you. Now the majority of agreements I see tend to rely heavily on part one, brand awareness. And this tends to be, in reality, about placing logos. Now this part is normally the longest list when people break down the contracts. Does this sound familiar when you think about your contract? Well, when we move to virtual, it will be important to still offer this brand awareness logo placement, but it should become a smaller percentage of your overall offer. So let me say that again. It should become a smaller percentage of your overall offer. But logo placement is still an area that's important and you'll be pleased to hear you can boost that during your virtual event. Now, I think digital logos are much better than physical ones because you can actually get someone to click on them opposed to looking at them at a physical event. You're able to point them in that moment at more specific information. And crucially, you can gain some valuable metrics on that person too. Now, this is way better than physical event logo placement. Now, however, I have to stress this if you can part. Early evidence is that attendees don't spend much time clicking on logos or visiting digital booths when they're at your virtual event. So therefore, we can't place logos and branding on our virtual platforms and expect attendees to spend all day clicking links. That is not how we drive value from our sponsors. It's just not going to happen. 
We can give our commercial partners more coverage than we did at our physical event, as most platforms open up the opportunity to do that through a variety of different ways. But overall, we have to think about toning down the value of this logo placement and move towards the other two areas of the agreements. We have to start to add more value in those other two areas, the face-to-face -face and crucially, thought leadership. Now boost these two and you will deliver much more value. Now virtual events offer a great opportunity for face-to-face -face contact between buyer and seller. So not in person, but face-to-face. We are all now used to chatting to someone on Zoom and all of our virtual events should be able to facilitate face-to-face -face between buyer and seller. If you're not offering sponsors the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with potential buyers online at your event, then the connections piece of your event and the value you offer your sponsors will be really weak. So the top line here, you should be able to offer the sponsor the opportunity to meet one-to-one -one with select attendees. They should be able to meet face-to-face -face with anyone who visits their booth. Now we must and we can. Platforms give us the ability to do this, boost this aspect of a sponsorship agreement. And this is where I suggest you look to add much more value with your virtual event. Now the third aspect is thought leadership. In reality, a place on your program or a connection to your meaningful content. We should be able to offer more involvement in the content at our events as virtual gives us the opportunity to have more content. Now this is an important point. Slightly shifting away from sponsors for a second, part of the value proposition for your attendees as you shift to virtual should be access to more quality content and for a longer period of time. So back to sponsors. Some of this new content should involve your sponsors. Now for various clients over the last few months, I've helped them extend this thought leadership aspect of the sponsorship agreements to great effect. So add more content and offer your sponsors the opportunity to do lots of things at your event. Why not allow them to take a place on a panel? Maybe they could moderate a slot in a small invite-only chat room style session. Or how about saying to them that they can upload content, not just promotional stuff to their own booth, or maybe even give them another room where they can run their own content. Now what about having your virtual host interview their CEO and place that on your programme? You could also ask them to record 30 second clips that will be of interest to your audience and drop them in between sessions. And a summary of a session at the end of a popular slot when you upload it as your post event content. Now virtual offers a whole new way to add content that boosts the sponsor's thought leadership. Virtual offers us the opportunity to do things differently and in many ways to do things better. Now I believe we can offer much more value for sponsors at our virtual events. So building on this positive approach to virtual sponsorship, we can have more confidence as we try to retain the sponsorship money we've already earned. So the second aspect I want to cover is an overview of my retain strategy. For many organisers, they are still looking at income that was committed to the physical event. So how do we retain that income when we move to virtual? Now I have had three clients who have successfully used this strategy to retain around 80% of the physical sponsorship. The first thing to do is to approach this pivot to virtual simply as another way to deliver on the agreement that was made from the physical event. This starts with a confident front foot approach along the lines of, hey, our virtual event gives you the opportunity to deliver almost every aspect of our agreement that covered your physical event. Confidence is the key here. Over the summer, I had a conversation with someone who said they basically started conversations with sponsors like this. Hello, I'm uh, really sorry to tell you, but we've had to replace our physical event with a virtual one. Now, that's not going to make anyone salesperson of the year. And, and you will be surprised by how many people start on the back foot when they're looking to move people from physical to virtual. You have to be confident. Now most companies I speak to are offering the option of a sponsor transferring to the next physical event. And I like that. For me, that's still revenue retained even if it's pushed to the following year. But a lot of event organisers that I'm in touch with are reporting a high jump to virtual. To give you a benchmark figure, it seems to be around 75% of sponsors coming on this virtual journey. Now once you have informed the sponsor of your jump to virtual, I suggest you send them an addendum not a new contract, simply an addendum. 
As I outlined earlier, I think you should break down the contract to highlight the face-to-face -face that you can deliver, the brand awareness, and crucially, the thought leadership. Within these three areas, you can list what will remain the same as the physical contract and what can be delivered similarly at your virtual event. And then the fun part, you can now add all the wonderful extra things that you can now do in the virtual world. Now this process proved to be less of a challenge for the three clients who've gone through this with me. For example, when you look at some of your event sponsorships, I bet there are areas not directly related to your actual event. Maybe you've offered emails to your members or subscribers or posting blog posts on your website, adverts in magazines, etc. So all of these parts remain the same. And there will be parts that are clearly like for like. A physical booth just simply changes to a virtual booth, for example. Now taking this approach of breaking down the contract into these three areas, face to face, brand awareness and thought leadership has proved to be a brilliant way to highlight the extra benefits that going virtual can bring, especially in terms of metrics. What data you can send back to your commercial partners is supercharged online. Now this is an area where you should definitely be investigating. If you choose the right platform, you're able to amaze sponsors with the granular data you can provide. As I said, underpinning all of this is lead generation. Your sponsor or exhibitor probably never wanted to attend your physical event, but they did want the leads that you were able to generate. And there is no reason that your virtual event cannot generate as many leads. So focus on how the virtual event can supercharge the lead generation for your sponsors. This will boost the value proposition and will help you retain those who have already bought into your event. And of course, this all sets up you to attract more sponsors for your virtual event. Now the final area I want to concentrate on is perhaps the most important and this is a look at the virtual events from our sponsors perspective and to do that I want to ask you all to think about the following six questions. What level of support and best practice education do we need to give our sponsors for them to get the most out of your virtual event? So setting up a booth is one thing but how do sponsors actually use it and when do you have to offer help? Do your commercial partners actually know what's possible for your virtual event? Have you explained all the options to them? Do your commercial partners have the right digital assets to make the most of the virtual opportunities? Are they comfortable using the technology you have chosen? Will it take them more time, resources and expertise than they thought it would to be involved in your virtual event or is it quite straightforward? Please take 15 minutes later to do this exercise it might tell you something really, really important. You might find out that it's actually not price that's scaring your commercial partners away. It may be a lack of understanding about your virtual or a lack of resources on their side. And you can help them in those areas. I believe that we have to do all we can to ensure that our commercial partners have the opportunity to receive the coverage they enjoyed at our physical events. Not only that, but we have to make the most of the added potential of a virtual event. I think the easy part may be persuading our sponsors and exhibitors to come with us on this virtual journey. The hard part might be helping them to make the most of it.